Hi, my name is Jason Patrick. I'm the Technical Director at Electrotechnic. Today I'm going to show you how to perform a voltage rise calculation by hand and using software. The example is going to be based on that taken from AS4777. This is a three phase 30 kVA inverter system. We have the two sets of PV arrays connected to the 30 kVA inverter and two underground cable sections connected to the point of supply. The allowable voltage rise limit according to AS4777 is 2%. The first step to the calculation will be to calculate the inverter current. Based on its output of 30 kVA and a three phase voltage of 400 volts, the inverter output current is going to be 43.3 amps. We're going to use that to base our cable size calculations. Now I'm going to explain to you how to do the voltage rise calculations by hand. So we've worked out that the minimum cable size to carry the inverter output current of 43.3 amps is six millimeters squared. So just to explain the voltage rise equations, there are two, two equations you could use. There's what we term as the simple equation and there's an accurate equation. The simple equation is obviously a lot easier to use by hand. You just need this, this VC value. Uh, which is taken from the standard AS3008. The accurate equation, which is the equation we're not going to use by hand, but it's used by our software. This accurate equation uses cable resistance and reactance and considers power factor as well as cable operating temperature. Using this equation can result in smaller cable sizes. I should also mention, and you may have noticed, that these equations for voltage rise are in fact identical to those for voltage drop. So first thing, we'll work out the voltage rise for our minimum cable size of 6 square mils. We're going to use this simple equation. We've worked it out for the total length of run, which is again, it's it's two sections, one 60 meter section and one 30 meter section. Combined, that gives us 90 meters. Our inverter output current of 43.3 amps. We've taken our VC value from the standard, 6.49, all divided by 1,000. We've worked that out to be 25.29 volts or 6.32% which is much greater than our minimum requirement, our allowable requirement of 2%, much greater than 2%. So we know we must use a cable size to meet voltage drives requirements, which is much greater than six square mil. We can't use six square mil. So we'll work it out based on the two sections. Again, we've got a 30 meter section that's this section here and a 60 meter section of cable. So if we divide our 2% up, we can allow 0.67% voltage rise for the first section and 1.33% voltage rise for the 60 meter section. Now we've done the calculations already. Uh, I'll show you uh, what results we get for, firstly for say a 16 square mil, which is much larger than our six square mil. So we have to go through quite a few iterations by hand to get to this. Now, our voltage rise result for 16 square mil, uh, 16 millimeters squared was 3.1, Five six volts or 0.79 percent using a simple voltage rise equation uh, 
uh, for 16 square mil. Now, this 0.79 is larger than 0.67, so 16 square mil is not going to meet our voltage rise requirement for that first section. 16 square mil cable voltage rise for the 60 meter section. We calculated the result by hand uh, to be 6.31 volts or 1.58%, which is larger than our allowable limit of 1.33%. I'll move to the, the next cable size up and we'll see if we meet our requirement. As you can see, quite a few iterations by hand are required. So if we go to 25 square mil cable for the first section, uh, 25 square mil, our voltage rise calculated by hand is 2.01 volts or 0.5 percent. For our second section using 25 square mil, the calculated result is 4.03 volts, basically uh, double, of course, it's double the length. Um, or 1%. In both cases, if we use a 25 square mil cable, both these results are under our allowable limits for the sections. Um, now, if you are producing a voltage rise calculation report um, for your power authority, um, it might look something like this. This is the output of, of our software. Um, so you would have a maximum allowed limit of 2%. Now, submains section is, is not applicable in this case. We have a consumer's mains and a final sub-circuit. Our calculated uh, voltage rise for the consumer's mains was uh, 0.5 percent and over here for our final sub-circuit um, we have one percent and so the total voltage rise um, could be shown as 1.5 percent overall which meets our allowable limit Next, I'm going to show you how to do the calculations using our software. Now I'm going to show you how to perform the voltage rise calculations using Cable Pro software. I've set up a new project. Now I'm going to add the first cable calculation for the consumer's mains. The load current was 43.3 amps. I'm going to change voltage drop to voltage rise. It's a three phase inverter. For the consumer's mains, the voltage drop, voltage rise should not exceed 0.67%. The length of the run is 30 meters. 400 volt system. We're going to use XLP insulated cables, single cores, copper conductors. The installation is going to be buried in a combined enclosure. Cable Pro determines a minimum required cable size of 16 square mil, which is smaller than the hand calculation of 25 square mil. That's because we use the very accurate voltage drop calculation method. Here's the actual voltage drop in percent. So we'll go back to the project and perform the same 
calculation for the final sub-circuit. I will copy this consumer's mains calculation. I will rename it as final sub-circuit. I'll open this cable calculation. All the inputs should be the same. All we need to do is change the length of run to 60 meters and the permissible voltage rise to 1.33. Installation is the same. Again, over here we have a minimum cable size of 16 square mil and over 60 meters, the actual voltage rise is 1.33%, which meets our, our requirement just. There you have it. It's very quick and easy to do the same calculation using the software. Now, we have another feature uh, within the project to produce a special voltage rise report. So for this, we need to select the calculations associated with the sections. So I've selected consumers mains calculation, final sub calculation. The total voltage drop rise is calculated to be 1.99%. Our allow allowable voltage rise is 2%. Our inverter is a three phase. The inverter rating is 30, in this case, kilowatts or KVA. I'll accept that. I'll generate the report. Here we have a customized voltage rise report for our installation, showing that uh, for the final sub circuit, which is connected to the inverter, um, we've got our one, uh, one by 16 square mil copper cable over 60 meters. The voltage rise is 1.33% for that section. Then we've got the consumer's mains. Again, we have a one, one circuit of 16 square mil copper conductor th over 30 meters. Our voltage rise is 0.66%. Total voltage rise for the installation is 1.99% or 7.97 volts, which meets our requirement of a maximum voltage rise of 2%. There we have it. We have a, a nice complete report, which we can submit to our power authority for approval. Thank you for watching guys. If you'd like to try uh, the software, you can go to our website, elek.com.au. Thanks again.